quite a lot of times about your early life and, mm -hmm. and, and your career, but how did you get into show business in the first place? Right. No drama school, no RADA, no nothing, right? Left school, 15, got various jobs, hated them all. Uh, discovered on Bow Road Station by Vidal Sassoon, who approached me and said, oh, would you like to be a model, a uh, hair model? And uh, I thought, mm, I don't know about that, you know, model. Anyway, I had a boyfriend at the time who knew Vidal, and he said, oh, yeah, he's great. He said he's, he's, uh, works in a Mayfair salon. Do it. So I became a hair model. Mm -hmm. So I was quite used to being photographed and being in the papers and things like that. And the boyfriend I was with at the time uh, was an actor, and um, he was in a show called Mr. Roberts with Tyron Power. Anyway, he came out with the show and he said, look, Vera, there's, uh, there's going to be an audition for a show called Wish You Were Here at the casino. Jack Hilton's bringing all these people over and it's uh, about a, a, a okay. holiday camp. Holiday camp, yeah. And he wants singers and dancers, and they've all got to look good in bikinis, and the guys have got to look tasty. So you and me, we'll go for the auditions. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we did. So I used to trot on that stage every day with my bikini, and they'd say, with everybody else, they'd say, you, 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 rest, go home. All right, OK, next day, you, you, you. This went on for a week. And uh, I'd, I'd said to uh, where I was then at that point working as a hair, hairdresser's receptionist that I was ill. And then in the newspaper, there's a great big picture. <laughs> Vera Day looking very healthy and fit at the auditions of Wish You Were Here, standing there laughing in my bikini. Oh, dear, that was it. Uh, got the sack immediately. And I thought, oh, my God, what's going on? Because in those days, you could not get the sack, you know. Uh, what am I going to do? Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, cut a long story short. It came to the point where I had to do what I'd got to do. Yeah, what do you do? I said, I'm a singer. So I sang after the first few bars. They said, yeah, all right, what else did you do? I'm a dancer. Yeah, come on then, dance. So I sort of did a little sort of jitterbug on my own mm -hmm. in my high-heeled shoes and bikini. Talk about Essex girl, you know. <laughs> and they said, yeah, all right, what else? I said, well, actually, I'm not a singer or a dancer. I'm a straight actress and a very cockney accent. And when they all fell about with laughter, they said, yeah, it's all right, Vera, you're in. We know what you can do and what you can't do. And I got in the show. So Jack Hilton was the guy producing that, That was Jack Hilton, yeah. and the first night of the show, Val Guest was sitting in the audience, Val Guest producer, film producer, left his card at the stage door and wrote me in a part for a film was called uh, Dancing Lady. Yeah. It was for the part of a babysitter, and instead of having just a normal babysitter, he had me. Well, I mean, a sexy you know, I mean, yeah, 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 it was a course. bombshell. Now, there's a thing because Val Guest would go on record saying he discovered you. Yes. That's really Jack Hilton, isn't it? Yeah, well, yeah, well I suppose so, really, yeah. So, but Jack Hilton also produced all the Crazy Gang uh, reviews, yes, didn't he? Yes, he would so. not allow. So, uh, okay, so the Chris career took off and I took, did lots of films. But then Jack Hilton suddenly said, no, you, you're not going to do any more films. Uh, unless you sign up for three more shows. Mm -hmm. So I did, I had to, because I wanted to do the films. I, I just couldn't afford not to. So um, so I did Pal Joey, which was a fantastic show. And then I did two years with Crazy Gang, which I did not want to do that. Two years with the Crazy Gang, with I'd heard so many stories about these well, dirty that's, that's old sort of men. legendary, isn't it? Can oh. you share a couple of them? I mean, what were they like to be around? OK, well, one of the things was I used to have to a, a little uh, scene with uh, these two other girls and I would be dressed in a tiny little negligee and we'd be saying, like, is anybody looking for wife? Da -da 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 -da. And I used to have to say, is anybody looking for wife? A lover who can love you all your life. Uh, 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 so do, a cottage small would do me if the bedroom's large and roomy, something like that. Anyway, so one night I got on and I'm trying to get through it and, oh my God, I am in agony. Everything is itching and hurting, and I'm trying to get through my lines, and it was unbelievable. Uh, transpires, I had a quick change, you see, to get out of that, to that costume mm. on the side of the show, and the gang filled up my bra with itching paper. And it was horrendous. And Jack Hilton was some summoned, and they really did get into a lot of trouble. But I was all red, blotch, blah, blah, blah. It was... <laughs> so it was just one thing that they did. But did you, I mean, did you get frustrated with the parts you were you offered both in, in film and theatre? Uh, no, not really, because I thought, thought myself lucky to be in there because, you know, uh, no way would I have been able to get in there apart from 
what I had to give, you mm. know, my attributes, let's put it that way. Mm. I mean, I did very well in school acting and uh, it's the only thing I was really good at and I desperately wanted to go into the theatre, but um, just wasn't possible. So I was happy. I never said, oh God, you know, I've got to do something, blah, 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 because I don't know, that's I've got it, do what I'm good at, I'm, you know, so I did. Um, I do have one regret, uh, that's because the kitchen sink drama started to come in, mm. right? And I was not kitchen sink type. And um, I was offered the part in Saturday night, Sunday morning, uh, Rachel Roberts played the part and I turned it down because it, it wasn't me. I didn't like it, didn't want to do it. And uh, it was a stupid thing to do because look what it did for her, mm, yeah. yeah. And, and then the, the parts became fewer and fewer. And so um, I began doing a cabaret act. There was a time when they would start bringing in like French and Italian exactly. actors, wouldn't they? Sort yeah. of those glamour yeah. girls from the, the, New York. The, so the parts yeah. that I was up for, or good at, or whatever, uh, they bring Marlene Dermingo or whatever, and this, this one and that way. Mm. Italian and French became the flavour of the month, you know. I did lots of TV stuff, I did lots of live TV. Um, There's one called You Did the Red-Headed Blonde, didn't you? I did I the Red-Headed Blonde. Now, but, uh, yeah, but that was that was something that Val Guest wrote for his wife Yolandi Donlam, okay. and um, and I did that part. And that was again, this, this was saying it's um, all live television. Uh, so I had uh, the whole. It was like a vehicle for me, you know. I was on in front of that camera all the time. Uh, with an American accent that I had to keep up all the time and I actually managed to do it quite well and uh, I, I got fantastic notices for it really good notices but that's the one thing that I'm really really proud of that's the one thing I could say yes I'm proud of that look at it and see it you know I, I, I mean I'm quite proud of too many crooks I liked that that was good fun nice to work with the boys and they were good fun and it's quite a good film. Well, Talking Pictures TV, you've got quite a lot of your films and we'll be talking about them yeah. individually later on. Right. But um, one right. I don't think they have as yet is a film, one of my favourites, as you know, is Gripper the Stranger <laughs> with, with Boris yeah. Karloff. Now, because yeah. Boris, had, you watched his films when you were a, a, a little a girl, young girl. And he was you? the yeah. bogeyman. Yeah. Yeah. If you're a naughty girl, I'm going to get Boris Karloff after you. And here I am actually working with him and he's strangling me <laughs> as well. <laughs> Yeah. But he was a gent, wasn't he, Boris? He yes, was, yeah. he was a, a perfect English gent. Mm. He loved cricket, he liked his cucumber sandwiches and his cup of tea. He was a thorough gentleman. He, and he was gentle and sweet because I told him about that. I said, oh, <laughs> I, I used to be terrified of you, you know. And um, no, he was a lovely, lovely man. Tell me, Vera, about uh, <laughs> making The Woman Eater. It uh, must have been an experience. Yeah. Oh my goodness me, it was an experience of a lifetime. I mean, Shakespeare, stuff like that, forget it, yeah. <laughs> it was just one rollicking laugh from beginning to end. Uh, George Cluris was a delight to work with, a very good actor, a very famous actor too. Uh, but even he used to say, look, love, this is all tongue in cheek, you know, just just do it. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he worked with Orson Welles as part of the Mercury Theatre, hadn't he? So oh, he was a brilliant like from, actor. From up there to down yes, there. Yeah. brilliant actor. Yeah. I mean, even the special effects. I mean, when you think of special effects now these days, it, okay, it was about a tree that ate women, but had to be only beautiful women, right? Mm -hmm. So beautiful women were given to this tree to eat, and then this mad professor would take out the resin or the dew from the tree yeah. and inject it into something oh that's it inject it into women who would live forever he was experimenting to have a, a, a creature that would live forever and ever and ever you know and um anyway somehow or other i i seem to become his his housekeeper for some unknown reason <laughs> and uh, he's not going to send me to the tree because he's fallen in love with me and he takes me down to the dungeon and he says I want to show you I want to show you something and he shows me this tree and I have to say oh 
you're frightening me. Oh, you're mad, you know, and all this stuff. And um, he says, yes, you and I, we are going to rule the world. So anyway, that, that's the gist of the story. And anyway, this tree... Not, talk to, spoil, about not to spoil the plot as no, well. No, no. <laughs> wait a minute, it's special, the, the special effects, right? The yeah. tree, there's, there was a guy behind, there was a, a bit of twigs, you know, a bit, <laughs> bit like that Charlie Chaplin thing, you know, like twigs thing, da, da, da. And this guy used to be behind the twigs, pulling, pulling the twigs. And you could see his arm come out. <laughs> And there used to be this little guy sitting in front playing the bongos for no reason. <laughs> you down, bum, 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 and then there's this, this going, and he goes, Oh, well, you're bad, you're bad. I think the tree was like some, from some sort of tropical island, wasn't it? So the bongos were to, yes. to calm it down. Yes, I yes, think. yes, yeah. that's right. Because trees that, can get a bit oh, carried away, you, don't I'm they? Glad oh, I've seen it, you know. I've always seen the story. <laughs> <laughs> that's see, he comes back and he brings this tree and the, the bongo player mm -hmm. who had control over the tree. And that's it, yeah. Anyway. So you get the script of this, and you're, you're on the floor making this film. How do you keep a straight face, quite literally? Because... Uh, well, easily, actually, okay. because it's a job. You've got to do it. OK, here are your lines, do it. Uh, so you do. I mean, otherwise, if you did, you know, fall about with laughter here, or think this... I mean, I made quite a few films that I would think, oh, my God, what else am I doing, you know? But it's your job, and you do it, and you, and you, you do the best you can out of it, you know? And you do your best to look frightened and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Just being how, how, an actress. How, how long a shoot was it? Was it quite a quick film to make? About three weeks, I was think. It? As much yeah. as that? As <laughs> much as that. Yeah. Three hours. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, but, yeah, but yeah. bizarrely enough, it's, yeah, it's, no, no, it's, it's a classic. Do you know, do you know that there's a group of <laughs> say, Americans, yeah, yeah. right, who hold uh, every month they watch Woman Eater in a, in a, in a dungeon, <laughs> right, and they they send me letters about it and everything. And what is more, they we it's somewhere in Holborn they hmm. showed it okay. and. Um, these people were, because I had my son with me, Keegan, right? And he, so we were at the back, we're laughing about it, saying, oh, oh, you know. And this guy said, excuse me. Um, and he got really uppity. You, you do realise that you're a sport guy. Um, I mean, if, if, you, if you think about the genre of it, or, anyway, he goes into this long, very, very intellectual, and me and Keegan are standing there going, like, oh, well, right, you know, sorry. <laughs> it is a cult film now, isn't it? I mean, it is a cult film, but... They were taking it, 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 it was like an amazing cult film. It is a cult film for being so terrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't say that, because people are supposed to be turning off from their oh, drones. Oh, no, it's they? good. <laughs> no, it's, it's a brilliant film. Uh, no, no, it is, it's a brilliant film to watch because it is so awful in it being brilliant, because <laughs> you would look at it and think, oh, look at that, it's not unbelievable. Well, I love it, so there. Good. Okay. So enjoy Woman Eater. Good.